Do you think there's a crisis of femininity at the moment? Do you think that women are struggling for good role models right now? I do think so. And, you know, I, I know from my personal experience, I don't have a role model online. I don't have a role model. And if I do have any kind of role models, it will just be like a some of the men in the field that have done really great work in psychology, but I can't tell you there's a single woman that I've ever watched growing up and thought, I want to be like her. And that not, that's not because there's anything wrong with the women out there. Maybe it's my values don't connect with current environment. But what I would love to see is how we can embrace every part of being a woman. I just loved, I, I love being different to a man. I have no desire for complete equality with a man. It just doesn't make me feel good knowing that I can do everything a man can do because I'd rather what's the point of you if we do everything the same I'd rather you complete the areas of my life where I'm deficient and I complete areas of your life where you're deficient and when I was you know living in England and w working around uh, English environment and stuff there was such a desire what I found with feminists and uh, particularly in the English environment there's no specimen of human being that is more privileged than the English white woman in my experience, there's no human on this planet that is more privileged than the English white woman. And when I used to see how much they would complain about the oppression they experienced, and I just thought to myself, you definitely still have more rights than somebody like my father, who's got a bit of an accent and he's definitely Muslim and stuff like that. You definitely have more of a privilege than him. And you definitely have more of a privilege than, you know, this the Caribbean guys or the Nigerian guys or the Muslim guys when you go to the airport. You definitely have a privilege. But because people are so almost dying to be a victim, they would complain about such small things. I remember like being in schools and the teachers would complain like, oh God, the music here is too many male artists. That's, that's inequality. And I just thought, you don't know what suffering is. You haven't experienced it, but you want to because it gives you meaning and purpose. And so I felt, and this is probably going to sound bad, but I felt like it was the most privileged members of society complaining about being oppressed when they haven't seen true oppression. And I, and I always say to feminists that, you know, from uh, that background, I'm like, do you, do you want the privileges of men or do you want the privileges of white men? Because I promise you, if you're an, a white woman, you don't want to have the same treatment as a black man when you're pulled over by the police or by the airport staff as a Muslim man with a beard. Are you sure you want to be treated like a man or you just want to be treated like a certain type of man? Because I promise you, you're very privileged. And I felt it even as a woman with what, like I have pretty much white skin. I feel incredibly privileged. So I felt like it's not a gendered thing. It's a class thing. You have more privileges through your class and your skin tone and your appearance than you do have gender. So I just didn't understand the battle. And that's what led to my disassociation. One of the other problems I think is that a lot of the women that espouse this sort of victimhood narrative and say things like we need to smash the patriarchy and chivalry is dead because we don't need men, they are luxury beliefs that are held by women who are sufficiently financially stable and live in a society that is fine for them. Now, yeah, I'm totally open to believing that a high-powered female psychologist or lawyer or attorney or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, maybe doesn't need to have the man pay for the first date or hold the door open for her or make mm -hmm. sure that she gets home safe or whatever, because that's, she, she is absolutely fine. Consider for a second, the woman that is on benefits living in some rundown council estate in the Northwest of the UK, who mm -hmm. maybe the partner that she's with didn't even complete secondary school. Maybe he has yeah. no GCSEs, he had an absent father home, no one ever taught him how to be a man. Perhaps those codes of chivalry weren't constraining to him, they were assisting. Like things, mm -hmm. it is one, as far as I can see, it is one continuum from you should make sure that your date gets home safe to you shouldn't hit your wife. Like it mm -hmm. is a single continuum all mm -hmm. the way down, that there is an yeah. asymmetry in the safety that men and women have. And as soon as you start to open that door, this isn't me saying that like if women want to walk home safe, they're like in 20 years time, they're going to be hit. Yeah. But my point is that as soon as you accept the fact that there are certain things that men can offer that women can't, as soon yeah. as you take those away, men start to ask the question, well, why should I bother doing this and this yeah. and this and this yeah. and this? And it start the dominoes begin to tumble. So a lot of these opinions are held by women for whom they are never going to be affected by the bad externalities of doing it. It's the luxury mm. belief of 
all of the people that live in gated communities with private security saying defund the police. Eat shit, yeah, bro. Exactly. Like, eat yeah. shit. It's got fuck all to do with you. This has got nothing to do with your life. This is you being able to proselytize about how much you uphold the the underclass and the working class that are being persecuted by police that come through their neighborhood. You don't live there. You don't deal yeah, with these problems. And it's exactly that. Here's what it is. Here's what it's like. You know when you're watching a great football match and uh, you're so engrossed in it, you almost want to wish you supported a team. I don't watch football, but when I watched the World Cup final, I was wishing I was which, uh, whichever team. I was like, whoever scored, I was on their team. I wanted to be part of that glory because at least you're, you feel alive. Now, when you're not involved in any kind of uh, oppression, any kind of cause, any kind of uh, anything, you start to lose purpose. When you're watching a boring football match, you start knowing noticing how cold it is, how shit the food is. But when you're watching something so exciting, you forget all of that and you feel alive. What I see when I see these incredibly, incredibly privileged women fighting for women's rights, it's like they've watched um, they've watched the trauma of other people and they so want to feel alive because human nature is designed for survival. When you've got it so easy, you still crave meaning and purpose. You still crave kind of some kind of uh, hostility. So they jump in the fight that they actually, A, don't need and B, they're already so privileged. And when I see these kind of feminists who are arguing about men's rights and putting men down when while they live this most amazing life, uh, what it screams to me is you're dreaming to have a meaning and purpose. You want to be on that football match. You want to be in that boxing ring. And because you don't have it, you're going to pr- identify with the people that do and almost cr- have a pseudo oppression. And that's what it looks like to me. You are so gr- I'm so grateful to be a woman, especially growing up in the West, speaking English. Do you think I would be here speaking to you if my English accent wasn't like this? What a privilege I have. So to see those people who have this complain that they're oppressed, it, it's laughable because I'm from a different world when I go back to Kashmir. It's laughable to me because women gender rights don't matter when you haven't got food on the table. Given the fact that there is a challenge, perhaps, even the women who are performatively doing this victimhood by proxy thing, they would probably like to have better role models and better values to focus on. In your opinion, mm-hmm. what what are the things that can predict a healthy psychology for a woman? What, where are the places that affirm that she could stand uh, that would make her life better and would also make the lives of the people around her better? I think the key, I know I talk a lot about how everybody's similar, but in the sense that everybody's also different, it's authenticity. Here's a trick for mental health as a woman. You remain completely and utterly authentic, and you can't know that if you jump on other people's bandwagons, if you imitate the culture around you, if you imitate the other people's experiences, if you adopt values that you haven't actually experienced. So a lot of feminists will say, oh, oppressed men, men in workplace. And then I'll say to them, who oppressed you at the workplace? Oh, my boss, she was a bitch. I'm like, she was a bitch? Yeah, the guy was great. The manager was great. He was lovely, but the woman didn't. So I'm, I'm asking them, what is your lived experience? Is it really that men have been oppressing you? No, they've never actually treated me that badly. Right. The moment you lose touch with your authenticity, you start living in a delusion. And when we live in a delusion, we are, are almost, we're just, it's a predictable, slow and sl- steady suicide emotionally and uh, psychologically. So start to live according to your authenticity. What do you truly want? Well, do you truly want to sleep with this guy to look cool and to act like a bad bitch? No, you don't. How do you feel afterwards? I feel shit. So why are you doing it? Do you really want to text your ex after a fight with your boyfriend? No, but I just want to get even. Why are you doing it? Do you truly want to post that picture of you out there and just have to deal with DMs all day? And do you truly feel good when you post on that OnlyFans? No, but I just want a bag. What do you want to do with that bag? I don't know. I don't even use them. Stay in touch with your authentic self. I promise you it's a cure to any psychological or mental health issue. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.